Whenever you're factorizing and you end up with a situation like this, where you have two terms separated with a minus, and each term is a perfect square. What do I mean by a perfect square? Well, what times what gives you 9? Well, that's 3 times 3. What times what gives you 16? Well, that's 4 times 4. What times what gives you x squared? Well, that's x times x. What times what gives you 7? Aha! So 7 is not a perfect square because we don't know two numbers that can multiply to give us 7. And so perfect squares are numbers like 9, 16, x squared, and 25, for example. Anything that can be multipl anything that can be obtained when you multiply two numbers that are the same together. So is x squared a perfect square? Yes, because x times x can give x squared. And is four a perfect square? Yes, because two times two can give us four. So what you then do is you open up a bracket, you put your x and x, and your you, we said it was two and two, and then one bracket will get a plus and one bracket will get a minus. This is called the difference of squares. And that's the answer. But if you want to double check to make sure that it actually works out, let's multiply the two brackets together and let's see if we get back to x squared minus four. Well, we can start by multiplying x and x and that gives us x squared. We'll then multiply x and minus two and that gives us minus two x. Our next step would be to multiply this positive two with this x over here and that's gonna give us plus two x. And then we'd multiply that positive 2 and that negative 2 to give negative 4. Have a look what happens though. The middle two terms, they both have an x in them. And they actually cancel out completely because minus 2 plus 2 is 0. And so what we end up with is x squared minus 4. And so it does work. And so the final answer for that question is x plus 2, x minus 2. So can you remember what the qualifying criteria are for difference of squares? Well, step one, you need two terms. Step two, they have to be separated with a minus. Step three, they both need to be perfect squares. So how many terms do we see over here? Well, that's two terms, so we are satisfied with that. Are they separated with a minus? Yes, they are. And are they perfect squares? Well, what times what gives us x squared? Well, that's x times x. So that's a perfect square. What times what gives us 16? Well, that's 4 times 4. So that's a perfect square. What times what gives us 11? Yeah, so that one's a bit tricky, right? So I was just testing you there. 11 is not a perfect square because you can't find two numbers that multiply together to give you 11. So because we have satisfied all three of these conditions, we can do the difference of square technique. And so all that we do is we open up our two brackets and we say x and x. Then we said what times what gives us 16? We said 4 and 4. And then you Oop, that doesn't look like a 4. There we go. And then we put a plus in the one bracket and a minus in the other bracket. Or you can put a minus and a plus, as long as they are different. And that's the end. And moving on to the last question for this video. So let's see if this qualifies for a difference of square. So is it two terms? Yes, it is. Are they separated with a minus? Yes, they are. And are they perfect squares? So this is where people get a bit stuck. So what times what? could give you 1 over x squared. Well, in fact, 1 over x times by 1 over x will give you 1 over x squared because when you multiply fractions, you multiply the top and the top, which is 1, and then you multiply the bottom and the bottom, which is x times x, which is x squared. And what times what gives you 1 over 9? Well, check this out. 1 over 3 times by 1 over 3, if you times top and top, well, that's 1 times 1. And 3 times 3, well, that's 9. And so 1 over 3 times 1 over 3 does give us 1 over 9. So both of these are perfect squares because you can obtain them by multiplying two numbers together and those two numbers are the same. Why do we call it perfect squares anyway? Well, it's because in a square, all sides are the same. And so 7 times 7, for example, is 49. And so we say that 49 is a perfect square. 
And so this does qualify for difference of squares. And so all we do is we open up our two brackets. What times what gives us 1 over x squared? Well, we said 1 over x and 1 over x. What times what gives us 1 over 9? We said 1 over 3 and 1 over 3. One bracket gets a plus, one bracket gets a minus. And that's how you do it.